I am so ready for today's video. I feel like for me, I'm playing catch up with today's video. I am trying a bunch of makeup on camera that I've promised you guys that I would try out. I have a lot of items from my most recent Camera Ready Cosmetics haul. A lot of you wanted to see me try out Lethal Cosmetics formula, so I'm trying out Lethal palettes today. Sigma has a bunch of stuff that launched, like the cheek products that I'm trying today. And also, I just want to chat a little bit about makeup news. Jared Blandino leaving Too Faced and of course by Beauty Closing. So let's get into it. I've already prepped my face with moisturizer and sunscreen. So the first item that I wanted to pull out was this. This is what I got from Camera Ready Cosmetics. This is the Mayron Hydro Prep Hydrating Hyaluronic Serum. It's a intensely hydrating hyaluronic blah blah blah. Apply a generous amount to the face and neck for instant hydration. For added hydration, they say you can use this under your moisturizer. I'm just gonna use it now. It sounded interesting. Mayron, if you don't know, is a professional makeup brand. So I'm excited to see. It's clear. Just gonna pat this in and rub it out. We'll see what we're working with. That feels really nice. I like this. Ooh, okay. I like this. This feels like really nice pre-makeup prep. I will continue to test that. Now for foundation, I didn't really have anything new. I got these scent in PR. These are the Cali Ray Free Dreaming Diffusing Tint. I don't think I'm actually going to end up using this, but I just want to see what it looks like. I might put a foundation over top. But I did want to try it because Cali Ray is a brand that's sold at Sephora that I've never Never tried before. Oh my goodness. This packaging. So cute. I think I'm a mixture of four and six. Okay, let's see. I think it's just a skin. Oh shoot, that's watery. Okay, definitely need to shake it up. Ooh, this is messy. I'm gonna use a brush to apply it too. Oh, I think I'm shade four and not six. Let's see. I'm gonna use this Sigma multitasker brush. Oh, maybe I'm a mix of both. I don't know. I feel like I just applied too much. I just wanted to try it. Feels really nice. It's blending out really beautifully. Honestly, this is giving me more coverage than I thought. So that's good. Okay. I mean, I don't know. It says it's a skin tint. I don't really mind if it doesn't give me much coverage. But I did want coverage for today's look, so that's convenient. But a lot of product comes out at once. Don't do this while you're wearing white pants like I am. <laughs> I have makeup stains on every single one of my shirts. I can't not make a mess. Wait, but I like how this looks. Very skin tinty, but I think it looks nice. We'll have to see how it wears. It looks like I would get oily really quickly with this. Dry skin girls, I think it's sitting pretty on our skin. It looks nice. I do have a little breaky breaky outie. I don't know from what. I've been testing a lot of base products probably from that situation. Ooh, I like the way that this looks. So I've been getting a lot of questions asking me to update you guys on the makeup news. Well, at least my thoughts. <laughs> but as far as Jared Blandino and then his other partner, I don't know, begins with a J. I can't remember the top of my head. Leaving Too Faced, he made an announcement on his Instagram that he was going to pursue other kind of entrepreneurial entrepreneurial endeavors and is leaving Too Faced. But if you don't know, a long, long time ago, him and his partner did sell Too Faced to Estee Lauder, but Jared in particular was kind of the face of the brand. Like you knew who owned Too Faced. I'm using the M Cosmetics Fine Line Brow Pencil. I'm opening a new one, but I've used this before. This is really, really nice and fine. Anyways, you knew Jared if you followed Too Faced at all because he was very much the face of the brand. He's just found himself in some very distasteful situations and I think because of that, you know, that turned a lot of people off of the brand and it really was in the brand's best interest to kind of remove him as face of the brand. I mean, honestly, him announcing his leaving, I really don't care. You know, I don't really care so much about Too Faced these days anymore anyways. And you can look up the scandals. I'm really not going to cover them. But I think he's made his money off of Too Faced. You know, he's rich. I'm honestly surprised it even took him this long to leave the brand, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't care. I think I saw it coming. I just, I don't think it was in the be brand's best interest for him to be the face of the brand anymore. It, because as a business owner, he, I think he made some poor choices that, ugh, if you saw his face, you 
didn't really want to buy the makeup, but just knowing who he was and some of the things that he's done in the past. I think he's made enough money from Too Faced. So, I mean, best of luck to him and his future endeavors. But that honestly is something that, one, I'm not surprised by, and two, I'm not really interested in. I'm interested to see what will happen to Too Faced without him. I don't think much will happen. I think Too Faced has kind of gone down the gutter anyways. I don't think him leaving or him staying is going to make much of a difference because I'm pretty sure Estee Lauder probably has a bigger say of what happens in the brand and it's been that way for a long time anyways. This is just speculation. I have no clue. Just the way that it seems. Honestly, you know, with the closing of Bite Beauty, I don't think Too Faced is gonna close next but you know for a while Too Faced was the brand I don't think they're the brand anymore and I think Too Faced could use a rebrand if I'm being honest and I think Too Faced could do a really really cool rebrand just knowing the vibe of the brand in general you know there's been a lot of talk about what even is the identity of Too Faced anymore is it sexy is it sweet and cutesy and I think if they can really hone in on that and change the brand's image especially now that Jared is no longer a part of Too Faced I think it's a great opportunity for a rebrand if I'm being honest because we are all sick and tired of the same old Too Faced stuff anyways so yeah I think a rebrand would be super duper cool mm, okay but yeah don't care about Jared leaving but I actually would like to see Too Faced get a refresh so this is from a smaller company I got this in PR just thought I'd try it Bay Brow and it's a brow styling wax it's completely clear like the ABH I'm just gonna do that by the way the M Cosmetics brow pencil it's been a long time since I've used that it is bomb and I know I wasn't going to talk about this, but I know also in recent news, and I, I feel like this is gossipy, so I don't really want to talk about it. I don't like talking about that stuff on my channel. Yeah, Michelle Fawn, you guys can look it up, was posting some weird things on her story. I did see that. She posted about, like, her healing a man who's been in a wheelchair his whole life and him walking, and people are saying she's in a cult. Some people, she, like, went to this retreat. I don't know. I did see that. I saw her post on my Instagram, so that's the only reason that I know about this, because I I was like, what the heck? Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be too interested in the topic. Y'all can look into it, but <laughs> those were some odd posts. Side note, I think I really like this brow gel. It's not too heavy. It doesn't have too strong of a hold, but I really like the way that my brows look. It definitely does not have a super strong hold like the ABH, which I prefer. We'll see if this lasts because with these brow gels, sometimes they look good in the beginning and then your eyebrow falls and then it doesn't look good anymore. So we'll see how the hold is on it but you guys know I'm not too into the feather brow but for the sake of this product my brows look really good okay I need to look into this but I think I like this this is a really neat product I am wearing warm colors today so I think I'm gonna use some of the warmer tones in this lethal cosmetics palette I know there's purples and I know you guys want me to use them but it doesn't go with my outfit like these tones do so I'm gonna use them today but don't worry I will use more, but we're just going to play with this formula. So I'm going to do one eye and I will be back. All right, so obviously today's a more wearable get ready with me. I will definitely be playing more with the Lethal palettes, more colorful sides, but I just wanted to do something that I'm comfortable with today. And I will link this palette in the description box. Lethal Cosmetics is a German brand. If you don't want to deal with shipping all the way from Germany, Camerati Cosmetics is a great retailer to get their products from because they're shipping from the US if you're in the US. I um, mean, I do believe they have a really good international shipping policy as well. So I'm going to start off, I'm just using an ABH blending brush with this color right here. I love the grungy tones in this palette. Lethal puts together really stunning eyeshadow palettes. Just the color stories that we all want to see from the mainstream brands. Look into Indie because because, I mean, Lethal's customized palettes that they curate, stunning. And look, this has very nice pigmentation. And it's just like a pukey yellow, which is so nice. And then we're going to go into this color right here, which is like a pukey olive. <laughs> really pretty full tones this palette has. But obviously, it has like some really pretty colorful kind of grungy tones. I love the color story of this palette. And by the way, I am very impressed with this formula. I think it's nice. I think a couple shades kind of lack a little bit of depth from what I was expecting based on how they looked in the pan but other than that everything has been smooth sailing with this palette so let's talk about not an exciting topic but the one that I've been asked my opinion on most which is Bite Beauty recently announced 
that they will be closing their brand. They are uh, keeping the lip labs open, which I think is a whole different concept anyways from the brand itself where you can create your own lipsticks. So I'm not surprised to see that that is staying because it's more of an experience as opposed to like a makeup company. But I didn't see the closing of the brand coming as a shock just because their products have been on sale for 50% off for such a long time anyways for the last few months. So obviously something was going on. This is the shade I'm talking about where I just feel like it didn't give me the depth that I thought I was going to get by the way. Maybe a couple years ago, semi-recently, doesn't feel like too long ago, but Bite Beauty scratched their whole makeup line and did a rebrand and became vegan. So they made all of their formulas vegan. And I just don't think that the rebrand was very successful. Honestly, I didn't even know Bite Beauty had issues or was in trouble in the first place before the rebrand because they were so known for their lip products. They had a few products that I know were constantly favorites. I'm gonna go into this shade next. This is really pretty. But you know, a brand is going to rebrand if things aren't going well. So I guess they needed to make more sales. So they made everything vegan, which I think is really cool. That's kind of a trendy thing to do now with makeup companies. But I don't think they did enough for the rebrand. They launched some products. I just don't think that their marketing was great. I enjoyed a lot of the products that they did launch. And I think it went over well with some people. I've also heard that some people feel like the lip mask. I actually have never tried that. They made it vegan and some people say they didn't like it as much. So maybe that could be why. The rebrand was more so about the reformulation of the brand becoming vegan. And I think they should have done a better job of reformulating and coming out with their old products that were really popular. Like they came out with the lipsticks. That's one of their newest launches. And it went over so, so well because Bite Beauty was originally known for their lipsticks, but it took them like a couple years before they even came out with that really great lipstick formulation. I liked their complexion products a lot. And it's interesting because Bite Beauty creates this style of makeup that is quite trendy nowadays. You know, that natural minimalistic kind of look so it seemed like in theory the brand would do well but i just think that their rebrand was really weak and people weren't buying it or not enough anyways and i feel like they didn't have a big enough brand to really be in sephora they weren't launching enough products and i don't know how pretty is this look so i like the lethal formula so far so I'm going to continue playing with other colors in the palette, but at least the neutrals are super duper pretty. I'm going to try this product next. I, funny story about this, the Sigma color correcting duos. These came out a couple months ago. They were sent to my parents' house because they had my old address. And my mom sent these to me soon after they got sent to the, my parents' house. But the package got lost with USPS. And I kid you not, two months later, the package showed up. Like a couple weeks ago. So this is new to me, even though it's been launched for a while, but I thought this palette was a goner. I was pretty sure you USPS lost this, but we found it. So I'm gonna use both of these. I'm gonna use it to color correct. I'm gonna direct you to watch Kelly Gooch's channel if you haven't already. I saw that she did a video on what she think happened with Bite Beauty and she does really great deep dives into like the rise and fall of certain brands. I don't think she's done it yet for Bite, but I think her plan is to, but she did talk talk about kind of her quick thoughts on Bite Beauty and she's very insightful. She articulates so well. I did watch the video. She really explained well why she thought what happened with Bite Beauty happened. And what I thought was interesting is that she said she doesn't even think the rebrand is the reason that the brand closed. She just thinks the parent company didn't want to deal anymore. Check out her video. She does a better job explaining it. This seems really nice, by the way. I like this. This instantly brightens up the area. I'm going to use the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. This is not a new product, but I wanted something with lighter coverage since we went lighter coverage with the foundation. But anyways, overall to sum it up, I saw it coming with Bite because you don't see things going on sale at Sephora for 50% off for no reason. But if that hadn't have happened, I would have been surprised because I feel like even with the rebrand, they have some nice staple products in their brand. I just feel like it would be a brand that was under the radar, you know, getting sales with their lip balms and their lipsticks and never a top contender, but 
never the lowest contender, but I guess that wasn't the case. So I'm really sad because Bite Beauty, I feel like, has been around a lot during my makeup journey. And, you know, you'd always see people using their products here and there. Again, never the star, but was always there. And if you do want anything from the brand, now is the time to get it. I've never been like a diehard for Bite Beauty. I've used their products. I've liked them, so it doesn't hit me personally. I'm not depressed about losing some of my favorites in my makeup routine with them closing, so I'm not as affected by it, but I know some of you really love their products. There's products that they have that I like, but they aren't my favorite brand by any means, so I'm not super depressed, but it's just sad to see the makeup brands come and go the longer that I've been in this space and people are losing their jobs, and I think that that is the saddest part, but you know, the world is always evolving, the market will always be evolving, the industries will always be evolving, and it's just interesting that I've been here long enough to see it happen. And I know a lot of you have been in the industry and paying attention much longer than I have. And you've seen a lot more of this. But it is sad. That's for sure. I'm trying to open this Sigma Beaming Glow Illuminating Powder. But I'm having trouble getting the sticker off. So this also came with the launch of the Color Correcting Duo, which I do really enjoy. But I can't get the sticker off of the grate. Is this a highlight? This looks like it has some shimmer. Maybe I don't want to set my under eyes with this. I'm going to use the Sigma Skin Perfector. Hmm. Oh yeah, that has kind of a strong illumination to it. There's some like glitter particles in this powder. Ooh, I don't like this powder. I can literally see the glitter flex. Oh no. Oh, this just made, oh no. <laughs> Maybe I used this wrong. It's called Fairy Dust, a beaming glow illuminating powder. Not a setting powder. My mistake. Ooh, I'm just gonna use some NARS translucent setting powder and try and fix that. The problem was the Cali Ray skin tint was also not making this area look good just because of the finish of it. You could see my pores a little bit more. Not bad enough for me to like poo poo on the product, but I just noticed my uh, pores were showing. Nothing a powder couldn't fix. But then with that illuminating powder on top, it was not a good situation. <laughs> that did not look cute. But instantly just putting this more matte powder. This isn't even completely matte. It has like a satin finish to it, but even just putting this powder over top, it made things look a little better. Not great. I messed that up. That's my own fault. I think this powder would be really cool as a finishing powder, so I'm going to put this to the side and we'll play with that. This brush from Sigma, by the way. I know this video is like, I feel like it's a whole Sigma video, but they've sent me a bunch of stuff lately that I've just have so much stuff from them that I wanted to try. But I love this brush. Oh my goodness. This is the Skin Perfector F67. Oh, this is perfect for like setting the t-zone that saved the day thank you nars let's finish the lower lash line i'm just gonna kind of mix all of the mattes this in the inner half of the lower lash line these two in the outer corner nothing too special going on here but yeah what are your thoughts on Bite Beauty closing. Are you surprised? Are you not surprised? Why do you think this happened? I am not nearly as shocked as I was as when Becca closed. I thought that that was kind of out of nowhere because Becca was kind of a bigger brand. Maybe they didn't have the exposure that they did once have before the brand closed, but I thought they were doing a-okay. I don't know. So this one is a lot less surprising to me, especially with the rebrand because like I said, a rebrand usually means things weren't going the best and they need to go back to the drawing board. So I mean, that kind of gives us the idea that they were in trouble in the first place. And it's unfortunate that it just didn't end up working out for them. Sad for the people working behind the brand, but I'm not really personally affected by the brand no longer being around. Isn't this such a pretty look? Okay, so I definitely want to play with the palette more, but I am liking this one so far. I also picked up this from Melt. This is an order that I still stupidly sent to my parents' house as I'm still getting used to typing in my new address. It doesn't happen as much anymore, but this was also in the package that got lost for two months. So I ordered this a while ago and I'm just now getting using it. This is the Melt Cosmetics Slick Waterline Pencil. I have the brown. I absolutely hated it, but I did order Ivory, which is actually truly for the waterline and it's a lighter shade. So I think I might like this better. Let's pop this. Oh my gosh. Oh, see? Too slick. Oh well, yes, it lays a lot of color in the waterline. 
I just, I have no control with this. I literally cannot not make a mess with this product. Another item from that package that got sent to my parents' house is I got a bunch of colors of the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Color Inks. I'm gonna try the brown. I haven't tried this color yet, but I like these. I don't really love this style of liquid liner, but I've been testing these nonetheless, and these are bulletproof. They really are. The only thing for me is I gotta get past how much I hate the application of this, but once the product is on, it really does last. And they have so many amazing colors, but I just made that way too thick. And it's not as dark as I thought it was gonna be, but it's fine. Okay, this is like the exact same color as my crease color, so it's not really standing out, but that's fine. <laughs> this is such a pretty color though for every day, especially if you're wearing even lighter eyeshadow than what I'm wearing right now. I can't do this while I'm talking. This is why my wings look so ugly. Give me a moment. Okay, that's good enough. I wish it was like a tad darker, but that's not on the fault of this. I like covered half of my eyelid with the sun. <laughs> I hope this video shows you that things don't always work out in our favor. Let's play with more Sigma Beauty. Surprise, surprise. But they are launching, I think on the 17th? Or is it the 19th? Whatever, I'll link it. Blushes, bronzers, and highlights. They sent me the whole range. There's more. So let's play around with them. Let me pull the bronzers. So I'm debating between light and medium. This is light and this is medium. They kind of look the exact same to me. <laughs> okay, let's see if there is a difference. I'm gonna use a Sigma powder slash blush brush and I want to try light first. Are you guys excited for the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzers? I ordered mine last night. I ordered two different shades, light and medium, because I just wasn't sure. So I'll be reviewing that for you guys. Ooh, the light shade is so pretty, and this blended on really smooth, and this brush is like the perfect density for bronzer. It's not too dense, so it makes it really easy to blend. So the light is working for me for something that's more natural and everyday, it has a decent amount of pigment. I think it pulls a little darker on the skin than it does in the pan itself, but I like that formula. That was really workable. Let me see if there's a difference with the medium. Call me crazy, but I feel like they kind of look the same. Ah, the medium has a little bit more red in it, which I don't really like. I actually prefer the tone of the light, but I don't think they look too different from one another. Yeah, I prefer the light on me. Looked really, really light in the pan, but they are showing up on my skin just fine. But I'm liking what light is giving me. Look at this. Yeah, you and you. I like these bronzers. These are good, but I like the shade light. In case you were curious, I look super bronzed right now. I love it. Okay, amazing. Now I have Hecka, Hecka, Hecka blushes. I don't even know what color to go for. There are like six different shades. So let me see. We could do Corderosa. Oh, I think this is just a new packaging because I love this shade. Like I already own two of those, so let's not use those since I have that shade. Then we have Sunset Kiss, a little too pink for the look that I have right now. Tiger Lily. Do I have these? I feel like these are in my blush palettes, but they're in individuals. Very Love might be the moves. All of them have like a very pinky tone to them. So I was hoping for something warmer. We have Nearly Wild. That's a little dark for me. And then Bronze Star. I'm gonna hold on to this one. So let's layer down Berry Love first. I'm gonna use the same brush that I used for the bronzer because I like the density level of it. I'm just gonna use a light hand and place that. This is a really natural color. The Most of these have a matte finish, but a couple of them have a shimmer finish. I'm looking at my monitor right now. I have my lights turned down so you can really see everything that's going on in my face. <laughs> Every wrinkle. The truth is coming out. Just fine. I said it to be that way on purpose so you could see how the makeup really sits, but it really is a wake up call for me. Ooh, this again, really pretty. I love this brush more than anything, but yeah, you can really build this up and get a lot of pigment with this. I want to give the shade Bronze Star a try because this is a shimmer finish. Okay, yeah, that does add shimmer to my cheeks, but not really in a flattering way if I'm being honest. I can like see my zits 
a lot better, <laughs> which is not good <laughs> right here. I mean, that's to be expected when you use a shimmery blush, but mm, that's ruining my ego. Just gonna use my sponge to tone it down because I went a little intense with it so that you guys could see. But I love particularly the matte formula. I feel like blends onto the skin really pretty. I'm gonna have to play with the shimmer formula to see how that would apply on the cheek on its own without a base matte color underneath. But I did not have any issues with the matte blush formula. I really like that. And then the last items that we have, there's uh, like six highlights here as well. So let's see, should we do gold? That one might be a little too dark for me. What else do we have? This one looks like it'd be better. Savannah, right? That one I just showed you was golden hour, by the way, that I thought would be dark. I think Savannah would be good. A light gold would be a good color. This one is a little bit more champagne. This is sunstone. That won't be good for my look today. This one is also brighter for my more fair girls. This is sizzle. Twilight has a lot more pink to it. And then moonbeam. Who? It's white. I think the color I'm gonna use today is Savannah. This looks like a good golden tone for a gal with light skin like me. So I'm gonna use the Dream Glow brush from Sigma and Beauty Bird. This is pretty. It's not the smoothest highlight in the world, but she gets the job done. I like the color range that they have. It's a good highlight. I mean, there's so many highlights on the market. How can you differentiate them all? It's nice. It's fine. I'm more in love with the bronzers and the blush. The highlight is probably my least favorite and the bronzer is probably my most favorite, but they're all good. And then let's go back to this Sigma Beaming Glow Illuminating Powder. I'm gonna take big brush. This is a Sigma powder bronzer brush. I'm gonna circle it in here and I just want to buff it over everything as a finishing powder. Now the glitters here are, I don't wanna say they're strong, but they're, they're there, you can see it. So if you don't like that kind of glittery look, I don't think you'll like this powder at all. But I thought they looked a lot more flattering on the face than they did from what I saw in the hand. Like I felt like on my hand and in here, I saw the glitters a lot stronger, but buffing it on like this. Ooh, I put that in the center of my forehead. That was way too strong. I'm gonna have to play around with this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I like this or not. This is TBD. Not sure, like I like it. I think I like it by how I just used it, but I'm gonna have to test that next time with you know a foundation that I'm more familiar with since this is a new foundation to me. Now for mascara, I'm going to use this guy from Kali Ray. This is the Hum Hello or High Water Mascara. So pretty, it is a clean mascara. I don't know if I like it, we'll see. I normally don't like mascaras on the first use, so I'm not gonna judge too harshly on it right now, but so far I don't like it. It just, it's not doing much for me. That's one coat, let me put a second coat on. I mean, with this first use, the mascara is just kind of there, but it's not really adding anything to my lashes, so I don't love it, but I know by now not to judge a mascara based on the first use. It takes a little bit for me to warm up to a mascara. So let me talk about the falsies that I'm gonna use. I got this pretty insane Lily Lashes PR package. It's their everyday faux mink collection, which I think is perfect for today. Love Lily Lashes. We have so many good ones. What do I want to use? Ooh, so I use Miami lashes all the time on my videos. It's a short version of the Miami lashes that I always use that you can't get anymore. But this, I love this, is everyday Miami. So it looks a lot shorter, a little thinner. So I'm going to pop these on off camera and then we will be back to finish the lips. Okay, so these lashes are super cute. Now I will say the band was a little thick. Not all of the bands looked quite as thick in the other styles. It might just be the style, but I can see the Miami yummy here but it definitely is like a thousand times more wearable. So let's finish off with the lips. Emile Cordon launched a new lip balm collection. I first tried Emile Cordon a few years ago and I really really love their lip balms. They're definitely a luxury lip balm brand. Like I said they launched a new collection so I'm gonna use French Pear. They've changed the packaging since I've last 
gotten items from them and I like this much better because mine broke. This is a little bit more clean and streamlined. But yeah, if you're looking into a luxury lip balm brand, this one is super duper nice. And I can just speak from experience that I do love this formula. So French Pear is the scent I have. This one is definitely more soft. I have a few other scents in this collection that are a little bit stronger, but French Pear, you can smell the sweetness to it, but it's not anything overpowering. But we definitely want to have a nice hydration before I put on my next product, which is the Maybelline Lip Vinyls. I've seen these on TikTok. People seem to be loving them. So I think let's do this color right here. So I did get some of these in PR, but these are the Superstay Vinyl Inks. I love the Superstay line from Maybelline. So I'm excited about these. Actually, you know what? I wanna set my face first. So I'm gonna try out the Melanie Mills. I've used a few products from Melanie Mills that I like. This is the super light, long lasting setting spray. So let me just set my face first. Well, this is like hairspray. This is an intense application, oh my goodness. I'm sure this really does make the makeup last a long time, but I don't know. I don't know if I like the application of that. That's too intense. Anyways, let me wipe off my lips now that we have the hydration on so we can get it nice and clean. This is the color Cheeky. Here's what it looks like. Maybelline has hands down some of the best drugstore lip products. So this is not like a really drying liquid lipstick. It has this kind of coconutty smell, which I like. Ooh, that color is really pretty. It's more mauve than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna get something more warm with this, but that's fine. I'll put a warm gloss over top. Hmm, it's very interesting. It's not quite a liquid lipstick, but it's definitely stuck on there. I wouldn't call it not drying, but it doesn't look drying, if that makes sense. I feel like this is going to be very reminiscent of the Super Stay Liquid Lipstick, and I don't think this is going anywhere, but it just feels sticky, which is odd. Maybe it needs more time to set, but I'm gonna ruin that because I do wanna put a warmer gloss underneath, go better with my <laughs> eye makeup. I have a couple different shades of the Maybelline Lifter glosses that I haven't yet tried. I love these glosses. I think they're some of the best from the drugstore. I don't know if I want to go gold. No, we're going to go in with rust, which is a dark red because I really want to warm this color up. But this is a very nice alternative for the Fenty gloss bombs. They're really great. So this is going to completely ruin the lip vinyl. So I'm going to have to try that at a later time. I really want it to actually like match my look today because I'm about to go for a walk out in public. Much better. Okay, I'm going to clean up my space and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on everything. Okay, here are my first impressions of everything that I used in today's video. Keep in mind they are first impressions. I haven't even worn these out yet, but so far the Mayron Hydro Prep Pro, I'm really loving how it made my skin feel. I'm gonna continue using that prior to makeup, but it did a great job with hydration. These I'm pleasantly surprised by, the Kelly Ray Skin Wellness Diffusing Tints. I like these, I don't love these. They do have that sheen on them that does emphasize texture. It definitely doesn't blur my pores or anything, which is it's not something a normal foundation does. You know, it does show the pores, but I do think the finish is very pretty. It reminds me a lot of the Rare Beauty skin tint that just came out. So if you like that, then I think you'll like this. This gave me more coverage than I thought. I'm gonna see how it wears, but I liked it more than I thought it would. So the Sigma, Spectrum Color Correcting Duo in Light to Medium. I think I do like this. I think it did a great job brightening. I'm gonna see if it affects wear time or creasing with my under eyes, but I really liked the consistency and it did a great job. So I'm happy about that. The Sigma Beaming Glow Illuminating Powder in the shade Fairy Dust. Again, I like it. I don't love it. I'm gonna have to continue playing with it. It's a little glittery. Do not set your makeup. This is definitely more of a finishing powder. Definitely wanna test it more, but it wasn't love at first sight. The bronzers, blush and highlights from Sigma. Love the bronzers. These are love at first sight. I don't think the difference between light and medium are enough really. And also I didn't like the undertone of the medium, but the light I think is really, really beautiful. It has that perfect everyday wearable undertone for me. It's a little bit more on the neutral side. Love the blend of these though. The blushes are also quite nice. They have a nice pinky range. I would love to see them expand that range into more orangey kind of tones. I don't love the finish of the shimmer. I feel like 
like if you have texture on your cheeks, milk bumps, anything like that, this is definitely going to emphasize that. But the mattes blended really, really beautifully. So I like the matte. And then the highlight is just a really great standard highlight. I don't have too much to say. It added a nice glow to the skin. I will continue to test the other colors. Bay Brow Hold Up Brow Styling Wax. I liked this a lot better at first. It's not really holding as much as I would like for it to. You know, the ABH, where you put it, where you leave it, is where it's going to stay all day. I can see the brows have lifted a little bit. They aren't as glued down, but they still kept a nice hold. This is like a more wearable, less intense version of the ABH Brow Gel. The Melt Cosmetics Slick Waterline in Ivory. It's still there. It's still holding on proud, so I think this is a nice waterline eye pencil, but again, it's so messy. I can't stand the messiness of it. The Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Color Ink. I love the product itself. I do not like the application of this. I've just never liked eyeliners of this style, but this eyeliner is not going anywhere, I will tell you that, just based on all of my other wears. The Cali Ray Mascara, definitely not my favorite. Didn't do much for my lashes. It's super duper natural. If you have naturally beautiful, long, thick lashes to where you don't like a really extra mascara, I think you'll like this, but so far it's not doing much for me. The Lily Lashes Everyday Foam Ink Collection. I don't think this is my favorite one. The lash band is a little Little thick but it still is very pretty. I'm excited to continue playing with this collection because they have some really beautiful styles. The Melanie Mills Super Light Long Lasting Setting Spray. <sighs> I don't even know. I'm sure it works. It kind of smells like hairspray so I, I think it's gonna work. The application is way too intense and unpleasant. I almost sprayed myself again but I was like why torture myself so I don't know about that. The Emile Cordon Classic Lip Balm. Love, love, love these. They do melt a little fast, so they don't last the longest given the price, so keep that in mind, but these do a great job of hydrating the lips. The Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. I'm gonna have to play with this more because I did put the lip gloss on top. Really interesting, never tried anything like this before. I think I still prefer the Superstay Matte Inks, which is the more liquid lipstick form. These are a little thick and sticky, but I wanna play with that on its own, so I'll continue to test that. The Maybelline Lifter Gloss in this shade, really beautiful. It has a nice coconutty smell to it as well. I know I love these, I just never tried this color before. And then finally, the Lethal Cosmetics palette that I tried today. Again, need to play with it more with the other colors, but I had a really great experience with today's look, really easy. The only thing is, like this shade, I thought it would give me a little bit more depth, but I do need to continue playing, and application was really smooth and beautiful. Now, if you don't know on my channel, I ever so often, after I try a bunch of products and then I try them for a long time, I do an updates video. Every single one of these products will be in my updates video in the future, so make sure you are subscribed to my channel where I give you my final thoughts on those products but thank you guys for hanging out with me and getting ready with me I hope you had a good time I hope you enjoyed the makeup chat and the makeup news chat and all of that good stuff it felt good to just play with some products that I wanted to test on camera and talk about what's going on in the makeup world so thank you guys so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one I guess have a good one